So I'm pretty stoked about the new planner and what it's going to mean for reporting with our task data. So I'm going to go through real quickly here a feature comparison for the different license tiers. And I'm going to do a demo of exactly what the user experience is going to be like for somebody who has a license versus somebody who doesn't have a license. So you can decide who you need to buy licenses for. And then we're going to talk about custom reporting because there's some options as far as where you get your data from that I really like in the new planner. So this license tier is what I would consider to be the kind of baseline for functional project management. So it's got, in addition to your normal planner stuff, you have also a sprint dropdown effort. So you can track how many hours something took and how many hours are estimated, how many are remaining in a project. You get custom fields. So I've added these two here. You get dependencies. So these dependencies are going to be what shows up in your Gantt chart, which they call a timeline in here. So this is very cool. Uh, if you've been doing reporting with planner data and been really frustrated by the lack of Gantt options, this is going to be your new go-to. And you can even zoom this thing. So check this out. You can zoom out, zoom in. You can go to a specific date. You can also filter this thing, which is awesome. So this Gantt chart is part of the Project Plan 1 license. So you can still contribute to tasks and complete tasks without a license. But if you want to view and interact with a Gantt chart, that will require a license. And then you've also got the typical board view that you get with normal planner, right? The board view is going to be accessible to everybody. So don't worry about that one. And you also have your typical charts. So this would be the part where we probably want to do some of our own reporting work, because in my opinion, this is not the most functional set of charts. So my impression is that they're going to do some amount of allowing you to customize the reporting in the web, but there's also access to the base data here. Okay. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit as far as custom reporting goes. And then we also have, so people is kind of a view of who's doing what in your project. That's kind of cool. And then goals. So goals are something where you can link your goals to a task. So essentially we're getting a whole lot more data tracking around our task work. And then if I click on the project name here, we get some metadata associated with this particular project. So we can add a project manager, a start date, and then it rolls up a lot of the data from our tasks. So it gives us an overall percentage complete and then the amount of effort completed and remaining for our project. And then if I go back to this grid view, let me show you where the custom fields are. So off to the right hand side, you can add columns in here. Let that sink in for a second because people have been asking about this for years, right? So let's do a quick feature comparison so you can see which license tier you're going to need. So the kind of cool thing about the licensing strategy that Microsoft is going with with the new planner is that your assignees don't necessarily need a upgraded license in order to create tasks or complete their tasks. I'm going to go through exactly what that looks like for your users in a second. I have a little demo with some test users, but what you're really going to want to pay attention to is which features your project managers need. So essentially with the base planner that everybody gets, you are going to have tasks and a board view in planner like you do now. There's no Gantt chart in that. You could potentially pull your data out and make one with Power BI, but it's some assembly required, right? With project plan one, also known as planner plan one, that one is kind of like the big upgrade. So it's $10 a month, which is not excessive at all. Um, but you get this whole new UI with all of the additional fields. So you get the effort level tracking, the custom columns, you get milestones, dependencies, the Gantt chart, all that stuff. So that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. I feel like that one's going to be the popular option. <laughs> so your project plan three is going to add Copilot, meaning you can ask Copilot to create a plan that is kind of a starting point that you then modify. You get baselining, resource management, roadmaps, and project desktops this is the desktop app. If you're super into project desktop, that's going to be what you want to go with. Plus all of the things in the lower level tiers, right? So that one's $30 a month. And then project plan five essentially adds portfolio management and ERP and enterprise resource planning to everything else that you get. So all of these are kind of adding on to each other. So that's licensing. And now let's look at exactly what the user experience looks like for somebody who is interacting with one of these premium plans, but does not themselves have a license. So here's my test user account. This user does not have a 
plan or plan one license. It is a member of this group. So this plan is associated with a group. The test user is in the group and the test user has a license assigned to it. So this user without having a license can complete tasks. So I can complete these. I can create new tasks and I can view the board view and the charts view. Okay. So I don't get the Gantt chart. I don't get the assignee view, but I can interact with this in a pretty functional way. Um, I can even add buckets if I want to. So worth noting is that this is the exact same experience that an external user that is invited to a group has. So I have an external user that I've invited to this project. This external user shows up with a hashtag next to their name when they're assigned things, and they can also add new tasks and complete tasks. My understanding is that the external users don't get the notifications that the internal users do. So just keep that in mind if you're planning to have external users in your projects. So that's the unlicensed user experience. Now let's talk about where to get the data. So if you've been following this channel, you know that I have a series of videos on how to get your planner data with Power Automate. And that's still going to be your go-to if you don't purchase the upgraded licensing because that data still lives in planner. So the project plan one data and above, that lives in Dataverse. Dataverse is a connector in Power BI, meaning that you can connect to that data with Power BI using the Dataverse connector. There's no special connector. And I will definitely be doing a video on the nitty gritty on how to do that in the near future. But for now, I just wanna show you where that lives. So if I go to the app launcher and then search for Power Apps, so Power Apps is where you're gonna find all of the Dataverse tables to look at. So if I click on tables on the left here and then click on all here because these tables aren't in the recommended category, which it'll default to. And then if I click on this filter here and then just filter by contains the word project, here's all of our tables. So we have a table for projects. So this is gonna be the one that has your project manager, project start date, project name, that kind of information in it. And then the baseline stuff, that was one of the upgraded, I think it was plan three and up tables. So that's gonna be where that lives. Project bucket, that's those vertical columns in the board view. But the thing is, is that the bucket information is actually on tasks too. So you don't necessarily need this bucket table. The checklist, so checklist is the subtasks. Got your goals in here. History, labels. So here's where the labels are. These are the colored labels. And this actually has the label names in it. So if you have been struggling to create reporting based on the labels, this is going to be very useful. I'm not sure what project parameters is. I'm going to see if I can dig up anything on that. And then we got our sprint. The sprint is actually on the tasks also. So project task is going to be your main one, right? So that's where all of your task data is. And the thing about the project data is that because it's in Dataverse, it's using security roles. And the security roles control what you can see in this table. So if you are not an admin user, you're going to see the tasks for the projects that you're a member of. If you are an admin user, you will be able to pull all tasks and all projects, say, into Power BI and do some organizational level reporting on that. So consider that because that'll be awesome. You also have the option of, uh, say, creating a custom role for these tables where you have view access to everything and then assigning that to your Power BI developers to create reporting on. That way you don't have to give developers admin access to pull all the data, right? Best practices and all that. And then just going down the list, you have a few tables down here that relate your things to each other. So your goals, your tasks, and your tasks, your labels. So you're going to need this one. Um, if you're doing anything with the label data. So I'm really excited about the implications here, meaning there were a few people that were struggling with getting their planner data with Power Automate because their plans were too large, like over 5,000 tasks. And this is going to be the route you want to take there. So uh, the Dataverse tables can hold millions of rows. You can connect to that with Power BI. And I'm just going to throw out there as a caveat, when you connect to Dataverse tables in Power BI, as one of your very first query steps, do a uh, remove other columns on the columns you don't need. So just keep like five to 10 columns and then remove everything else. 
Otherwise, it is extremely slow because there's like 600 columns on a lot of these Dataverse tables that connect to other tables. And if you don't remove the columns you don't need, you're going to have a bad time. So I just wanted to throw that out there as a, um, a warning to you. And a couple more things. I'm inserting this after the fact because I forgot to mention it. Uh, Dataverse supports direct query, meaning you can potentially have live reporting for your task data. It is slow, so you want to be strategic about it, but it is possible. And the other thing is that the custom column data, as far as I can tell, is not in the Dataverse tables currently. So I submitted a request that that be added on the Community Ideas site. So I'm going to put a link to that on the screen and in the description. So if you think that's important, go upvote it so that it gets voted in because that's how they decide what to put into the product, right? Squeaky wheel gets the grease and all that. So that's my take on the exciting things in the new planner and thanks for watching. Have a great day.